this um, this this was an image uh, just here re very recently published on the benefits of fasting. And so what we're looking at here is you can see the in an overfed state, which is what what this block here is reading. So these things are an overfed state. So what happens when you overfeed your body? It increases bad bacteria. So it increases that's what pathogenic bacteria means. It increases the types of pathogenic bacteria. And by so doing, it increases a lot of their toxins. And that's what these things here are. BAs, TMAO, LPS, and peptidoglycans are all different types of byproducts of increasing bad bacteria, which leads to GI permeability, AKA leaky gut. So we know that overeating leads to leaky gut. Now, it doesn't matter what you eat. The act of overeating increases uh, increases permeability to a certain degree, and that permeability feeds back and creates an inflammatory cascade. That inflammation can then disrupt your sleep. It disrupts how well you're capable of sleeping. And so that, that remember what we said earlier, that sleeping and, and not eating or fasting go hand in hand. Now here's what happens if you're fasting for less than two days. So I said we'd talk about some of the time-related restrictions as it relates to fasting. So if you're fasting under two days, so let's say you're fasting for 48 hours, right? We know that it increases certain kinds of bacteria that are associated with better health. We know that it increases your ability to produce mucin um, and to get rid of old mucin. So these, these compounds here help seal your gut. We know that fasting for greater than or for under two days improves your GI permeability. So if you have leaky gut, it actually starts to help repair that. We know that it helps with the modulation uh, of your inflammation. We know that it improves your sleep cycling. So there's a lot of benefits again here with, with just under two days of fasting. And if you take it beyond two days, okay, then what happens next is we get improvement in morphological changes. Predominantly, this is, and this is in your gut. Remember, these are fasting changes that occur in your gut. So if we're trying to improve your gut function, we get increased morphological changes, increase in goblet cells and villi length. So again, if you've had, you diagnosed with, with celiac disease and you're trying to improve your villi, then fasting might be a really great strategy to implement. If you're trying to increase your goblet cells, what's a goblet cell, by the way? You see this little cell right here? This cell secretes mucus or mucin, and mucin is a physical barrier that coats the cells and lines the cells, so it helps to prevent leaky gut. And so that's what fasting can help do, is it improves goblet cell production and function. We know it also increases the muscular tone of the GI tract. And that muscular tone is very important. Why? Because your gut's a muscle and peristalsis, the action of the muscle through your gut, is part of what you need in order to have regular bowel movement. So longer term fasting, uh, many more changes. So, so again, there are certain changes that occur under two days. There are certain changes that if you prolong that fasting uh, out even, even further can, can give you even greater benefits. Now, a one and a three day fast, remember what we said, those are calorie restriction fasts. And if you're gonna calorically restrict, you gotta make sure that you're not wasting away. So if you're wasting away, it's not the right time to do a fast. Now, this is where you should probably work with a practitioner or a doctor who understands nutrition to get you to a level where you're capable of fasting. But if you're wasting away, step one is not to fast. Step one is to intermittent fast, okay? Intermittent fasting is typically very, very tolerated, very well tolerated by most people. Okay, last research diagram we'll pull up here is again, this is, um, this is a diagram on the possible role of gut microbiota and the interplay between diet restriction, gut barrier function, health benefits, and non-communicable diseases. So what you've got here is dietary restriction in the term of meal frequency as well as meal size. And so what we know is if you reduce the size of the meal, reduce the frequency of eating, in essence, if you're intermittent fasting, you have increased mucus production, increased production of a compound called short chain fatty acids. Now short chain fatty acids are, um, are the fuel substrate for your colon cells. It's what your colon cells use to make energy to make new cells. So it's very important that we have adequate quantities of these. We know that it reduces a, a bacterial toxin called LPS. We know that it improves certain types of bacteria like your acromancia and your bifido and your lactobacilli are all increased 
with intermittent fasting. We know the epithelial cells renew faster. They renew and they regenerate better when you have fasting. We know that it helps to regulate how your T cells respond to different things when you fast. So there's a lot of benefits again to fasting just within the GI tract. And then you can see over here, if, you, if you're over consuming food, we have an increase in bacteroides and other types of pathological or pathogenic species. We have reduced short chain fatty acid production, increased permeability of the gut lining, which increases blood sugar, increases insulin, increases cortisol, and increases chronic inflammation. So the, the, you can see the delayed onset of, of diseases down here. These are a number of different diseases that have been associated with just eating, the bad, eating bad food and overeating food in general. You got digestive disorders like ulcerative colitis, celiac, Crohn's disease. You've got heart diseases. You've got different kinds of cancer like breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, and colon cancer. And then you have neurosystem diseases like MS, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. So again, fasting, very, very powerful tools. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.